The Irish Sea Irish, Muir Aran, and Mhuir Mian, Manx, Y. Cain Yerna, Scots, Erse Sea, Scottish Gaelic, Muir Aran, Ulster Scots, Irish Sea, Welsh, Moor Iverdon separates the islands of Ireland and Great Britain, linked to the Celtic Sea in the south by St George's Channel, and to the inner seas off the west coast of Scotland in the north by the Straits of Moyle. Anglesey, Wales, is the largest island in the Irish Sea. The second in size is the Isle of Man and the sea may occasionally, but rarely, be referred to as the Manx Sea Irish, Muir Mean, Manx, Mawar Vannon, Scottish Gaelic, Muir Manane. The Irish Sea is of significant economic importance to regional trade, shipping and transport, fishing, and power generation in the form of wind power and nuclear power plants. Annual traffic between Great Britain and Ireland amounts to over 12 million passengers and 17 million tons, 17 million long tons, 19 million short tons of traded goods. Topic: Topography. Topic: The Irish Sea is connected to the North Atlantic at both its northern and southern ends. To the north, the connection is through the North Channel between Scotland and Northern Ireland and the Malin Sea. The southern end is linked to the Atlantic through the St George's Channel between Ireland and Pembrokeshire, and the Celtic Sea. It is composed of a deeper channel about 190 miles 310 km long and 20 to 30 miles 32 to 48 km wide on its western side and shallower bays to the east. The Western Channel S depth ranges from 80 meters (260 feet) up to 275 meters (902 feet) in the Beaufort's Dyke in the North Channel. Cardigan Bay in the south and the waters to the east of the Isle of Man are less than 50 meters (160 feet) deep, with a total water volume of 2,430 cubic kilometers (580 cu mi) and a surface area of 47,000 square kilometers (18,000 square miles). 80% is to the west of the Isle of Man. The largest sandbanks are the Bahama and King William Banks to the east and north of the Isle of Man and the Kish Bank, Codling Bank, Arklow Bank and Blackwater Bank near the coast of Ireland. The Irish Sea, at its greatest width, is 120 miles 190 km and narrows to 47 miles 76 km. .The International Hydrographic Organization defines the limits of the Irish Sea with St George's Channel as follows On the north the southern limit of the inner seas off the west coast of Scotland, defined as a line joining the south extreme of the Mull of Galloway 54 degrees 38 in Scotland and Ballyquinton Point 54 degrees 20 n in Northern Ireland. On the south. A line joining St David's Head in Wales 51 degrees 54 and 5 degrees 19 w to Carnsore Point in Ireland 52 degrees 10 and 6 degrees 22 w. The Irish Sea has undergone a series of dramatic changes over the last 20,000 years as the last glacial period ended and was replaced by warmer conditions. At the height of the glaciation, the central part of the modern sea was probably a long freshwater lake. As the ice retreated 10,000 years ago, the lake reconnected to the sea. Shipping Ireland has no tunnel or bridge connection to Great Britain, the vast majority of heavy goods trade is done by sea. Northern Ireland ports handle 10 million tons, 9,800,000 long tons, 11 million short tons of goods trade with the rest of the United Kingdom annually. The ports in the Republic of Ireland handle 7.6 million tons, 7,500,000 long tons, 8,400,000 short tons, representing 50% and 40% respectively of total trade by weight. The Port of Liverpool handles 32 million tons, 31 million long tons, 35 million short tons of cargo and 734,000 passengers a year. Holyhead Port handles most of the passenger traffic from Dublin and Dunleary ports, as well as 3.3 million tons, 3,200,000 long tons, 3,600,000 short tons of freight. Ports in the Republic handle 3,600,000 travellers crossing the sea each year, amounting to 92% of all Irish sea travel. Ferry connections from Wales to Ireland across the Irish Sea include Fishgod Harbour and Pembroke to Rosslare, Holyhead to Dunleary, and Holyhead to Dublin. From Scotland, Cairnryan connects with both Belfast and Larne. 
There is also a connection between Liverpool and Belfast via the Isle of Man or direct from Birkenhead. The world's largest car ferry, Ulysses, is operated by Irish ferries on the Dublin Port Holyhead route. Stena Line also operates between Britain and Ireland. Irish Sea is also the name of one of the BBC's shipping forecast areas defined by the coordinates 54 degrees 50 and 05 degree 05 W 54 degrees 45 and 05 degree 45 W 52 degrees 30 and 06 degree 15 W 52 degrees 00 and 05 degree 05 W Transport for Wales Rail, Ironrod Aran, Irish Ferries, Stena Line, Northern Ireland Railways, Stena Line and Abilio Scotrail promote sailrail with through rail tickets for the train and the ferry. Topic. Oil and gas exploration Topic. Topic. Carnarvon Bay Basin Topic. The Carnarvon Bay Basin contains up to 7 cubic kilometers cu mi of Permian and Triassic Sin Rift sediments in an asymmetrical graben that is bounded to the north and south by lower Paleozoic massifs. Only two exploration wells have been drilled so far, and there remain numerous undrilled targets in tilted fault block plays. As in the East Irish Sea Basin, the principal target reservoir is the Lower Triassic, Sherwood Sandstone, top sealed by younger Triassic mudstones and evaporites. Wells in the Irish sector to the west have demonstrated that pre-rift, Westphalian coal measures are excellent hydrocarbon source rocks, and are at peak maturity for gas generation Maddox et al., 1995. Seismic profiles clearly image these strata continuing beneath a basal Permian unconformity into at least the western part of the Carnarvon Bay Basin. The timing of gas generation presents the greatest exploration risk. Maximum burial of, and primary gas migration from, the source rocks could have terminated as early as the Jurassic, whereas many of the tilted fault blocks were reactivated or created during Paleogene inversion of the basin. However, it is also possible that a secondary gas charge occurred during regional heating associated with intrusion of Paleogene dikes, such as those that crop out nearby on the coastline of North Wales. Floodpage et al. 1999 have invoked this second phase of Paleogene hydrocarbon generation as an important factor in the charging of the East Irish Sea Basin's oil and gas fields. It is not clear as yet whether aeromagnetic anomalies in the southeast of Carnarvon Bay are imaging a continuation of the dike swarm into this area too, or whether they are instead associated with deeply buried Permian Sin Rift volcanics. Alternatively, the fault block traps could have been recharged by ex-solution of methane from formation brines as a direct result of the tertiary uplift cf. Doré and Jensen, 1996. Topic. Cardigan Bay Basin Topic. The Cardigan Bay Basin forms a continuation into British waters of Ireland's North Celtic Sea Basin, which has two producing gas fields. The basin comprises a south-easterly deepening half graben near the Welsh coastline, although its internal structure becomes increasingly complex towards the southwest. Permian to Triassic, Sin Rift sediments within the basin are less than 3 km miles thick and are overlain by up to 4 km miles of Jurassic strata, and locally also by up to 2 km miles of Paleogene fluvio-deltaic sediments. The basin has a proven petroleum system, with potentially producible gas reserves at the Dragon Discovery near the UK, ROI median line, and oil shows in a further three wells. The Cardigan Bay Basin contains multiple reservoir targets, which include the Lower Triassic Sherwood Sandstone, Middle Jurassic Shallow Marine Sandstones and Limestone Great Oolite, and Upper Jurassic Fluvial Sandstone, the reservoir for the Dragon Discovery. The most likely hydrocarbon source rocks are early Jurassic marine mudstones. These are fully mature for oil generation in the west of the British sector, and are mature for gas generation nearby in the Irish sector. Gas-prone, Westphalian pre-rift coal measures may also be present at depth locally. The Cardigan Bay Basin was subjected to two tertiary phases of compressive uplift, whereas maximum burial that terminated primary hydrocarbon generation was probably around the end of the Cretaceous, or earlier if Cretaceous strata, now missing, were never deposited in the basin. 
Despite the tertiary structuration, the Dragon discovery has proved that potentially commercial volumes of hydrocarbons were retained at least locally in Cartagon Bay. In addition to undrilled structural traps, the basin contains untested potential for stratigraphic entrapment of hydrocarbons near sedimentary faults, especially in the Middle Jurassic section. Topic: <laughs> Liverpool Bay. Topic: The Liverpool Bay development is BHP Billiton Petroleum's largest operated asset. It comprises the integrated development of five offshore oil and gas fields in the Irish Sea Douglas Oil Field Hamilton Gas Field Hamilton North Gas Field Hamilton East Gas Field Lennox Oil and Gas Field Oil is produced from the Lennox and Douglas fields. It is then treated at the Douglas complex and piped 17 kilometers 11 miles to an oil storage barge ready for export by tankers. Gas is produced from the Hamilton, Hamilton North and Hamilton East reservoirs. After initial processing at the Douglas complex the gas is piped by Subsea pipeline to the point of air gas terminal for further processing. The gas is then sent by onshore pipeline to Powagen's combined cycle gas turbine power station at Kana's Key. Powagen is the sole purchaser of gas from the Liverpool Bay development. The Liverpool Bay development comprises four offshore platforms. Offshore storage and loading facilities. The onshore gas processing terminal at Point of Air. Production first started at each filed as follows, Hamilton North in 1995, Hamilton in 1996, Douglas in 1996, Lennox Oil Only in 1996 and Hamilton East 2001. The first contract gas sales were in 1996. The quality of the water in Liverpool Bay was historically contaminated by dumping of sewage sludge at sea but this practice became illegal in December 1988 and no further sludge was deposited after that date. East Irish Sea Basin with 210 billion cubic meters, 7.5 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 176 million barrels, 28 million cubic meters of petroleum estimated by the field operators as initially recoverable hydrocarbon reserves from eight producing fields, DTI 2001, the East Irish Sea Basin is at a mature exploration phase. Early Namurian basinal mudstones are the source rocks for these hydrocarbons. Production from all fields is from fault-bounded traps of the Lower Triassic Formation, principally the Aeolian Sherwood Sandstone Reservoir, top-sealed by younger Triassic Continental mudstones and evaporites. Future mineral exploration will initially concentrate on extending this play, but there remains largely untested potential also for gas and oil within widespread carboniferous fluvial sandstone reservoirs. This play requires intraformational mudstone seal units to be present, as there is no top seal for reservoirs subcropping the regional base Permian unconformity in the east of the basin, and Carboniferous strata crop out at the sea bed in the west. <laughs> Dalkey Island Exploration Prospect Previous exploration drilling in the Kish Bank Basin has confirmed the potential for petroleum generation with oil shows seen in a number of wells together with natural hydrocarbon seeps recorded from airborne surveys. New analysis of vintage 2D seismic data has revealed the presence of a large undrilled structural closure at lower Triassic levels situated about 10 km 6 miles offshore Dublin. This feature, known as the Dalkey Island Exploration Prospect, may be prospective for oil, as there are prolific oil-productive Lower Triassic reservoirs nearby in the eastern Irish Sea offshore Liverpool. Whilst the Dalkey Island Exploration Prospect could contain about 870 million barrels 140 million cubic meters of oil in place, this undrilled prospect still has significant risk and the partners are currently advancing a focused work program in order to better understand and hopefully mitigate these risks. However, given its location in shallow water and close proximity to shore, the prospect is of great interest as exploration drilling, together with any future development costs, are likely to be low. <laughs> Cities and towns Below is a list of cities and towns around the Irish sea coasts in order of size. 
Islands Listed are the islands in the Irish Sea which are either at least one square kilometre in area, or which have a permanent population. Anglesey and Holy Island are included separately. Environment the most accessible and possibly the greatest wildlife resource of the Irish Sea lies in its estuaries, particularly the Dee Estuary, the Mersey Estuary, the Ribble Estuary, Morecambe Bay, the Solway Firth, Loch Ryan, the Firth of Clyde, Belfast Loch, Strangford Loch, Carlingford Loch, Dundalk Bay, Dublin Bay and Wexford Harbour. However, a lot of wildlife also depends on the cliffs, salt marshes and sand dunes of the adjoining shores, the seabed and the open sea itself. The information on the invertebrates of the seabed of the Irish Sea is rather patchy because it is difficult to survey such a large area, where underwater visibility is often poor and information often depends upon looking at material brought up from the seabed in mechanical grabs. However, the groupings of animals present depend to a large extent on whether the seabed is composed of rock, boulders, gravel, sand, mud or even peat. In the soft sediments seven types of community have been provisionally identified, variously dominated by brittle stars, sea urchins, worms, mussels, telons, furrow shells, and tower shells. Parts of the bed of the Irish Sea are very rich in wildlife. The seabed southwest of the Isle of Man is particularly noted for its rarities and diversity, as are the horse mussel beds of Strangford Loch. Scallops and queen scallops are found in more gravelly areas. In the estuaries, where the bed is more sandy or muddy, the number of species is smaller but the size of their populations is larger. Brown shrimp, cockles and edible mussels support local fisheries in Morecambe Bay and the Dee Estuary and the estuaries are also important as nurseries for flatfish, herring and sea bass. Muddy seabeds in deeper waters are home to populations of the Dublin Bay prawn, also known as scampi. The open sea is a complex habitat in its own right. It exists in three spatial dimensions and also varies over time and tide. For example, where freshwater flows into the Irish Sea and river estuaries its influence can extend far offshore as the freshwater is lighter and floats on top of the much larger body of saltwater until wind and temperature changes mix it in. Similarly, warmer water is less dense and seawater warmed in the intertidal zone may float on the colder offshore water. The amount of light penetrating the seawater also varies with depth and turbidity. This leads to differing populations of plankton in different parts of the sea and varying communities of animals that feed on these populations. However, increasing seasonal storminess leads to greater mixing of water and tends to break down these divisions, which are more apparent when the weather is calm for long periods. Plankton includes bacteria, plants phytoplankton, and animals zooplankton that drift in the sea. Most are microscopic, but some, such as the various species of jellyfish and sea gooseberry, can be much bigger. Diatoms and dinoflagellates dominate the phytoplankton. Although they are microscopic plants, diatoms have hard shells and dinoflagellates have little tails that propel them through the water. Phytoplankton populations in the Irish Sea have a spring bloom every April and May, when the seawater is generally at its greenest. Crustaceans, especially copods, dominate the zooplankton. However, many animals of the seabed, the open sea and the seashore spend their juvenile stages as part of the zooplankton. The whole plankton soup is vitally important, directly or indirectly, as a food source for most species in the Irish Sea, even the largest. The enormous basking shark, for example, lives entirely on plankton and the leatherback turtle's main food is jellyfish. A colossal diversity of invertebrate species live in the Irish Sea and its surrounding coastline, ranging from flower-like fan worms to predatory swimming crabs to large chameleon-like cuttlefish. Some of the most significant for other wildlife are the reef-building species like the inshore horse mussel of Strangford Loch and the intertidal honeycomb worm of Morecambe Bay, Cumbria and Lancashire. These build up large structures over many years and, in turn, provide surfaces, nooks and crannies where other marine animals and plants may become established and live out some or all of their lives. There are quite regular records of live and stranded leatherback turtle in and around the Irish Sea. This species travels north to the waters off the British Isles every year following the swarms of jellyfish that form its prey. 
Loggerhead turtle, Ridley Sea turtle and green turtle are found very occasionally in the Irish Sea but are generally unwell or dead when discovered. They have strayed or been swept out of their natural range further south into colder waters. The estuaries of the Irish Sea are of international importance for birds. They are vital feeding grounds on migration flyways for shorebirds traveling between the Arctic and Africa. Others depend on the milder climate as a refuge when continental Europe is in the grip of winter. 21 species of seabird are reported as regularly nesting on beaches or cliffs around the Irish Sea. Huge populations of the sea duck, common scoter, spend winters feeding in shallow waters off eastern Ireland, Lancashire and North Wales. Whales, dolphins and porpoises all frequent the Irish Sea, but knowledge of how many there may be and where they go is somewhat sketchy. About a dozen species have been recorded since 1980, but only three are seen fairly often. These are the harbour porpoise, bottlenose dolphin and common dolphin. The more rarely seen species are mink whale, fin whale, say whale, humpback whale, North Atlantic right whales which are now considered to be almost extinct in eastern North Atlantic, sperm whale, northern bottlenose whale, long-finned pilot whale, orca, white-beaked dolphin, striped dolphin and rissos dolphin. In 2005, a plan to reintroduce grey whales by airlifting 50 of them from the Pacific Ocean to the Irish Sea was claimed to be logically and ethically feasible, it had not been implemented by 2013. The common or harbour seal and the grey seal are both resident in the Irish Sea. Common seals breed in Strangford Loch, grey seals in southwest Wales and, in small numbers, on the Isle of Man. Grey seals haul out, but do not breed, off Hilber and Walney Islands, Merseyside, the Wirral, St. Anne's, Barrow in Furness Borough, and Cumbria. Radioactivity The Irish Sea has been described by Greenpeace as the most radioactively contaminated sea in the world with some 8 million litres of nuclear waste. Discharged into it each day from Sellafield reprocessing plants, contaminating seawater, sediments and marine life, low-level radioactive waste has been discharged into the Irish Sea as part of operations at Sellafield since 1952. The rate of discharge began to accelerate in the mid to late 1960s, reaching a peak in the 1970s and generally declining significantly since then. As an example of this profile, discharges of plutonium specifically 241 Pu peaked in 1973 at 2,755 tera becquerels 74,500 C falling to 8.1 TBQ 220 C by 2004. Improvements in the treatment of waste in 1985 and 1994 resulted in further reductions in radioactive waste discharge although the subsequent processing of a backlog resulted in increased discharges of certain types of radioactive waste. Discharges of technetium in particular rose from 6.1 TBQ 160 C in 1993 to a peak of 192 TBQ 5, C in 1995 before dropping back to 14 TBQ 380 C in 2004. In total 22 peta becquerels 590 kCi of 241 Pu was discharged over the period 1952 to 1998. Current rates of discharge for many radionuclides are at least 100 times lower than they were in the 1970s. Analysis of the distribution of radioactive contamination after discharge reveals that mean sea currents result in much of the more soluble elements, such as cesium, being flushed out of the Irish Sea through the North Channel about a year after discharge. Measurements of technetium concentrations post 1994 has produced estimated transit times to the North Channel of around six months with peak concentrations off the northeast Irish coast occurring 18 to 24 months after peak discharge. Less soluble elements such as plutonium are subject to much slower redistribution. Whilst concentrations have declined in line with the reduction in discharges they are markedly higher in the eastern Irish Sea compared to the western areas. The dispersal of these elements is closely associated with sediment activity, with muddy deposits on the seabed acting as sinks, soaking up an estimated 200 kg of plutonium. The highest concentration is found in the eastern Irish Sea in sediment banks lying parallel to the Cumbrian coast. This area acts as a significant source of wider contamination as radionuclides are dissolved once again. 
Studies have revealed that 80% of current seawater contamination by cesium is sourced from sediment banks, whilst plutonium levels in the western sediment banks between the Isle of Man and the Irish coast are being maintained by contamination redistributed from the eastern sediment banks. The consumption of seafood harvested from the Irish Sea is the main pathway for exposure of humans to radioactivity. The Environmental Monitoring Report for the period 2003–2005 published by the Radiological Protection Institute of Ireland reported that in 2005 average quantities of radioactive contamination found in seafood ranged from less than 1 becquerel per kilogram 12 pci per pound for fish to under 44 becquerels per kilogram 540 pci per pound for mussels. Doses of man-made radioactivity received by the heaviest consumers of seafood in Ireland in 2005 was 1.10 microsieverts rem. This compares with a corresponding dosage of radioactivity naturally occurring in the seafood consumed by this group of 148 microsieverts and a total average dosage in Ireland from all sources of 3,620 microsieverts In terms of risk to this group, heavy consumption of seafood generates a 1 in 18 million chance of causing cancer. The general risk of contracting cancer in Ireland is 1 in 522. In the UK, the heaviest seafood consumers in Cumbria received a radioactive dosage attributable to Sellafield discharges of 220 microsieverts in 2005. This compares to average annual dose of naturally sourced radiation received in the UK of 2,230 microsieverts Topic. Proposed fixed sea link connections Topic. Discussions of linking Britain to Ireland began in 1895, with an application for £15,000 towards the cost of carrying out borings and soundings in the North Channel to see if a tunnel between Ireland and Scotland was viable. Sixty years later, Harford Montgomery Hyde, Unionist MP for North Belfast, called for the building of such a tunnel. A tunnel project has been discussed several times in the Irish Parliament. The idea for a 21-mile long rail bridge or tunnel continues to be mooted. Several potential projects have been proposed, including one between Dublin and Holyhead put forward in 1997 by the British engineering firm Simmons. At 50 miles 80 km, it would have been by far the longest rail tunnel on earth with an estimated cost approaching £20 billion. Topic. Wind power Topic. An offshore wind farm was developed on the Arklow Bank, Arklow Bank Wind Park, about 10 kilometres off the coast of County Wicklow in the South Irish Sea. The site currently has seven GE 3.6 MW turbines, each with 104 metre 341 feet diameter rotors, the world's first commercial application of offshore wind turbines over 3 MW in size. The operating company, Airtricity, has indefinite plans for nearly 100 further turbines on the site. Further wind turbine sites include the North Hoyle site 8 km 5 miles off the coast from Rill and Prestiton in North Wales, containing 32 MW turbines, operated by N Power Renewables Burbo Bank site 10 km 6.2 miles off the North Wirral coast Robin Rig Wind Farm in the Solway Firth 30-90 m 3 MW turbines are operating in a wind farm 7 km 4 .3 miles the coast of Walney Island. Turbines are being erected off the coast of Clogherhead, to be called the Oriole Wind Farm. The Warmley Extension 9 miles 14 km west of Walney Island off the coast of Cumbria. As of 2018, it is the largest on Earth. In popular culture During World War I the Irish Sea became known as U-Boat Alley. Because the U-boats moved their emphasis from the Atlantic to the Irish Sea after the United States entered the war in 1917, the port of Barrow in Furness, one of Britain's largest shipbuilding centres and home to the United Kingdom's only submarine building complex, is only a minor port. The Irish Sea figures prominently in the Mabinogen. 
In the second branch of the Mabinogen the Irish Sea is crossed from the south to Harlech by Mathilch, the Irish king, who has come to seek the hand of Bronwyn Firk Lear, sister of Bendigeidfrin, king of the Island of the Mighty. Bronwyn and Mathilch marry, but when she becomes abused by Mathilch, her brother crosses the sea from Wales to Ireland to rescue her. Within the story the Irish Sea is said to be shallow, in addition it contains two rivers, the Lli and the Archon, the fictional Sodor, an island in both Wilbert Audrey. S. The Railway Series and the Children's TV show, Thomas and Friends based on Audrey Books, is located in the Irish Sea. See also List of crossings of the Irish Sea Transport in Ireland Transport in the United Kingdom Transport on the Isle of Man Topic. References Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Filed Coast Marine Life Project Irish Sea Conservation Zones The Wildlife Trust's Living Seas, Irish Sea